after a few years, I got a phone call from Joe Malazzi saying, we'd like you to be the new leader of the Atlantis expedition. And I said, well, wait a minute, Joe. I said, I'm very flattered, first of all. I love doing your show. I love working with you guys. But I'm an asshole. <laughs> I'm a coward. Nobody likes me. Nobody would follow me. Uh, you know, I run away from danger. I can't, uh, you know, I, ha no, I, I have no skills at all to be a leader. He said, don't worry, that's our problem. I said, great, I'll do it. <laughs> I will say one thing for Richard Woolsey. As far as we could tell, despite all of his issues, he was not corrupt. And he was a, oh, man, he was a man of principle. And if he didn't have that at the beginning, mm -hmm. it wouldn't have worked. That's an excellent observation because that is true. He was there, even though he was ruthless yes. in his style, he was there to find the truth. Now, it is suggested that, that someone's head had to roll. So the, if you turn around what you just said, if no one was, in fact, responsible for this tragedy, he still was going to find someone who was as responsible as possible. That's quite so that's possible. not corruption, but that's like closure for him. Right. I need I need to assign blame to one of you people and by God, I'm going to do it. Yeah. Uh, or all of you. Um, but you're right. He was he. Well, that's sort of what I meant when I said he really believed in in oversight, civilian oversight of the military. That is a positive thing. You know, nobody wants, you know, especially with, you know, look at Myanmar. Right. I mean, nobody wants a military coup taking over a democracy. So he believes that the that the that the military has to be has to have civilian oversight in, in all of especially in a secret uh, and dangerous program potentially dangerous program mm -hmm. for the entire planet but um the other if i have a, a particular skill as an actor or a stock in trade as you would i i have uh it's playing characters that you initially don't like but you grow to like in spite of their bad impressions, so to speak. And it goes even to my character, the, the gym coach on The Wonder Years, Mr. Cutlip, who was a very, <laughs> you know, except for the fact that he had 70 IQ points less than Richard Woolsey, he was also a, an officious, by the book kind of a character. Um, and even the doctor, when he's first introduced, because he was a new technology and he did not and he had these special you know uh, algorithms that were supposed to interface with patients so he could develop and learn a bedside manner it didn't quite work at first so all of these characters they're not um they're not empathetic mm -hmm. and they're not uh they're not really likable at first but i think the key is always to to let the audience to give the audience glimpses of what's underneath, why they are the way they are, and and then the audience starts to root for them to loosen up and to be redeemed, so to speak. And and that's what they did with Woolsey eventually. You don't see that in the first episode, mm -hmm. but you start to see him wishing he had better people skills and wishing he had some community or friends with somebody. And what they did so brilliantly, really in the first episode of season five on Atlantis, when they made Woolsey the commander, was they had three little vignette scenes that really made the audience root for him. The first one was when he couldn't get out of the briefing room at the end. He literally couldn't get the doors to open. That was just so funny and so kind of pathetic. It's like the city, then, it's like the city didn't even want him there. <laughs> you know? Exactly. And, uh. and, uh, and there were little, there was a, the, when they give him his, uh, when uh, Taylor gives him her baby to hold, and yeah. he literally has no idea what to do with the baby. And then when he complains that he lost his dog and his divorce to his wife, I mean, there were little things that showed that he'd, you know, oh my God, this guy has, you know, it isn't all easy for this guy, no. or he's trying to make an adjustment. I think that the audience began to start to root for him. And the other great thing about playing that character is here I was an actor in my middle 50s. At a time when I took that job, it was just after the huge financial downturn mm. in 2007. And a lot of people that had retired had to go back into the workplace because they'd lost their retirement money or whatever. So you saw a lot of people in their 50s and into their 60s going back into the workforce trying to redefine themselves. So I, that was the other thing that was cool about playing 
that, that character, you know, someone in their middle 50s going from being, uh, you know, doing one job. Hey, I, I, I'm brought in to evaluate your leadership. Whoops. Now, suddenly I have, you know, the, the tables have turned and I have to become a leader myself. Someone trying to redefine themselves uh, and in a brand new work situation was something I think that was really in, you know, it was in the ether at that time. Thanks for watching this clip from Dial the Gate. You can find the full live stream shows on our YouTube channel or visit dialthegate.com for the complete schedule. See you on the other side.